happy Monday, friends. Oh my God, I am so cold. I'm so shivery. I'm also 40 minutes late, but I hope you still love me. <laughs> How was everybody's weekend? How are we all doing? Tomorrow marks the March three day design challenge and I'm here for it. I have got energy. I promise you I'm ready to go again. I am fighting talk, about to jump on in. And I am so excited. So if you haven't signed up for the March three day design challenge, make sure you go over and do that now, my friends, because the creative brief is going to be landing in your inbox tomorrow. I'm as prepared as I'm going to be. <laughs> it has come around so fast, um, but I'm excited. I am so excited to get designing together. But today I thought we would have a little exploration on the other end of the creative spectrum where we design, we pattern cut, and then we create our chosen clothes and chosen designs. And to do that, I thought we'd talk through some various snipping, cutting tools that I have. So I've just rushed all the way back from the studio. Um, and we're just going to have a quick talk through them, guys. You might be able to identify all of these. You might not know what a couple of them are, but we'll just have a really nice um, chat through these tools, get to grips with um, the familiars and the basics and all of that. Um, and yeah, and we'll go from there. And then I want everybody to get a really good night's sleep because tomorrow is going to be next level creative energy. Um, so one of the first things I've got here is this little thing. This is a rotary cutter. Um, I'm not sure on the size of this one, but you can get them all in completely different sizes. You can get tiny, tiny little ones, which are really, really good for going around detailed work. I would use a rotary cutter on, um, on slippy fabrics, on silks, on chiffons. You just want to weigh them down with pattern weights. Um, you can use the free scrap buster pattern if you wanted to and make the little pin cushion house. Fill that with rice and that works as a really good pattern weight. Um, and then you just slide this safety bit back here and you will roll across your fabric like so to cut out your pieces. Um, I would maybe also use this on leather, although with most leathers and furs, I use a um, Stanley knife or a scalpel. Um, but Michelle, one of the creative community members, has given us a really, really good top tip. All the blunt blades, you can change these blades here, these circular blades. You can um, buy packs of them and change them to make sure that these stay sharp. Um, Michelle Mason, a creative community member, I don't know if you're with us, Michelle, um, said that she use, uses her old rotary cutters to cut out paper. What do you know? Um, that's a really good top tip. So, a rotary cutter, nice and ergonomic here. Look, you can fit your hand in it. I pop my finger there for a little bit. Um, if you're doing more than one layer, I pop my finger there to kind of put a bit of pressure on and make sure that it is cutting through them. Um, really, really useful, really handy to have in your kit. Here, we've got some pink in shears. Now, these um, I use mainly for samples, in all honesty, but you can use them to finish the edges of your projects if you like the look of them. Um, over in the DPL Atelier, the membership Facebook group the other day, we were having a little conversation as to whether or not these can be sharpened. And the answer is yes, they can. So um, you can sharpen these. I think you... Um, it will be a case of sending them to a professional, but they they are able to be sharpened. So if you have a blunt pair, don't throw them out. There is life in them yet. Um, these are designed for wovens, for finishing the edges. They replicate the kind of zigzag stitch on your machine. Um, and then they stop the edges or they help to prevent the edges of your fabrics from fraying. You want to take long strokes with these. You don't want to snip it like this. You want to take nice long strokes. Um, I personally use mine, as I say, for just kind of samples and swatches. But if you wanted to, you could even have this as a decorative seam finish and you could have your seams on the outside. Um, press them open, see if you like that kind of finish. But pink and shears are just a really handy thing to have around the studio. Um, I don't reach for them daily. I definitely don't. But when I do need them, I'm so glad that they're there. <laughs> so pink and shears, rotary cutter. These are my fabric shears. These um, 
I bought from a place called Cloth House in London before the store, the brick and mortar store, unfortunately closed down. Um, but I have multiple fabric shears. I've got a pair of Fiskars, um, all sorts of brands. So you just find one that's nice for you. What I look for in a pair of fabric shears is a nice long blade. These are quite heavy, um, heavy weighted, heavy duty. My top tip for cutting out fabric if you want straight lines is to allow your table to take the weight of your shears. If you are holding up your fabric and snipping like this, it's not going to be accurate. You want to try and have as many kind of influences around you helping you cut out your straight lines. So allow the table to take the weight of your shears. And like the pink in shears, I would get into the habit of doing long straight snips and strokes with all of your cutting out just to avoid those kind of jagged edges. So these are one of my many pairs of fabric shears. I've also got a left-handed pair of fabric shears whenever I have um, certain interns come in who might be left-handed. Um, and of course, these can be sharpened as well. Take care of them. Never, ever, ever use your fabric shears on paper. So hide them from any family members who might be uh, looking for something like that. These are my paper scissors. Again, I have a fair few paper scissors as well. Um, these kind of can be sharpened easily. I like these. I've had these for years. I just like how the hand, look how grim and grubby that handle is there. How disgusting. Um, but I like how the handle feels for me, um, between my fingers. I know many, many people who in the industry buy two sets of fabric shears and use one for paper and one for fabric because they like the length of the blade. Um, I'm personally quite happy with these. I can see the kind of theory behind that one. But these will do me fine. Um, and they have done me fine for many, many years. So a separate pair of scissors for your paper patterns, um, for cutting card, all of that kind of thing. And then finally here, I've got my snips. Now, I literally own a minimum of three pairs of these. I have a pair with shoelaces tied through them that I wear around my neck. One pair lives at my sewing machine. One pair lives around my neck when I'm doing work. And the third pair is kind of, well, that kind of moves around the studio. But they are always on hand. Um, super useful just for cutting thread ends. You might have a... Um, thread cutty thing on your domestic sewing machine or if you have an industrial with a cutting function you might um, be able to do that via the pedal on your machine anyway but mine doesn't have that on my industrial so I always have have thread snips to hand these are obviously for nice detailed work you can use these instead of a seam ripper sometimes they're very very pointed here at the blade and very useful for accurate work um as I say, I equip myself with more than one of these because they're the kind of smaller tool that can go amiss in a studio. If you do wear them around your neck, please, please, please take care when you sit down. <laughs> I'm talking from personal experience. I have jabbed myself in the thigh more than more times than I care to admit. Um, so yeah, a nice range of cutting tools here, my friends. But all of them serve a purpose. All of them have their own application throughout the fashion process. Um, and it would just be worthwhile familiarizing yourself with these tools. There are others, there are others that we can dip into. Um, but these are the main ones that I reach for every day. So my friends, <laughs> I am so excited for tomorrow. If you are watching this on YouTube, my YouTube family, this goes out on a Friday. You may have just missed the March, um, three day design challenge, but do not worry because this is a monthly thing. So just make sure you go and sign up whatever stage of the month we're at sign up and you'll be put into the next design challenge with a new creative brief three days three live workshops an amazing creative community i cannot wait to share this experience with you all again it's going to be so much fun and i can't wait to send the creative brief out to everybody's inbox tomorrow morning make sure you are checking your junk folder make sure you are marking me as a white set white list sender or a safe sender so that you don't miss out and I'm going to see you here in the fashion studio, my friends, as we kick everything off and we get designing again. You don't need any specific tools, a pencil, paper and your laptop or your phone to get some research images. And we're off. So excited. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful, wonderful Monday. Wishing you a week of creativity. And I can't wait to take that journey together. Peace and love.